For this video, I have put together some multiple choice questions from past AP exams, which pertain to limits and continuity. Problem number one, a function f is continuous at x equals two. If f equals this for x not equal to two, and f at two is equal to k, then k equals what? Focus on the word continuous. If f is continuous at x equals 2, that implies that the value of the function at 2 is equal to the limit of the function as x approaches 2. That's just the definition of continuity. But we know what f at 2 is. Well, kind of. We know that f at 2 is equal to k, which is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and replace f at 2 with k. And then you can see that in order to find k, we really just need to find the limit of f of x as x approaches 2. Since f of x is equal to this expression everywhere except for x equals 2, then we really need to find the limit of this expression as x approaches 2. Let's try rationalizing the numerator and see what happens. In order to do that, I'm going to use the concept of a conjugate. If I have a minus b, the conjugate of that would be a plus b. The benefit of multiplying by the conjugate is you always get a squared minus b squared. So looking at the numerator, the conjugate of this is going to be the square root of 2x plus 5 plus the square root of x plus 7. Of course, we have to multiply by the same thing in the denominator. So I'll put the square root of 2x plus 5 plus the square root of x plus 7 down below. Remember, when you multiply by the conjugate, you're going to get a squared minus b squared. This is my a and this is my b. If I do a squared minus b squared, a squared will just uh, take away the radical. If I square this, the radical goes away. So I have 2x plus 5. So that's a squared. Now here comes minus b squared. Again, if I square this b, the radical goes away. I need parentheses because I have a binomial with a negative in front. I need to distribute that negative. So for a quick second, I'm going to put uh, x plus 7 inside of parentheses. I don't feel like recopying the whole problem just to distribute the negative sign. So you've seen it. Now I'm going to do it. So this is going to become minus x minus 7. So on the next step, we're just going to combine like terms. So we'll do 2x minus x and we'll do uh, 5 minus 7. So on the next step, we're going to have x minus 2 in the numerator. So we have this. But now we notice that we have a common factor of x minus 2 in the numerator and denominator. So on the next step, let's cancel this out. So we get this. Now I'm out of space, so I'm going to recopy that up here. Now we can do direct substitution without getting 0 over 0. So I'm just going to plug in 2 for these x's and see what we get. So, so far we have this. But then 2 times 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9, so we've got the square root of 9 plus the square root of 9 in the denominator, which of course is just 3 plus 3 which is 6. So this limit, the limit as x approaches 2 is 1 sixth. But remember, we were supposed to be finding k, but k is equal to that limit. So the answer should be b. For problem number 2, we are simply being asked to find the limit of this function as n approaches infinity. When n is approaching infinity, we can just focus on what term matters most in the numerator and in the denominator. 
So as the uh, n value gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this term is going to grow far faster than the n term. So we can just ignore the negative 5n. Uh, the term that matters most in the denominator will be the cubic term. So the limit as n approaches infinity of the original function will be the same as the limit as n approaches infinity of 3n to the third power over n to the third power. This is what matters most in the numerator and denominator. Um, but of course, this simplifies down to just three. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of three, and that's a constant, so the limit is simply three. So the answer should be D. Number three, we need to find the limit of this expression as x approaches zero. This expression involves the function f, which is given off to the side. So first I need to substitute this in to this expression. So we have the limit as x approaches zero. And then in the numerator we have f of x. So I'm just gonna copy this whole thing, two x squared plus one. And then minus f at zero, so I'm going to hit minus, and I'm going to type this uh, whole function, but I'm going to substitute 0 instead of x. Uh, I also need to put all of it in parentheses because I have a binomial with a negative in front, so that's going to have to be distributed. For a quick minute, I'm going to write 2 times 0 squared plus 1. In the denominator, we simply have x squared. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Um, zero squared is zero, two times zero is zero. So it's really just minus one. However, we see that we have the positive one and the negative one right here. So those are just going to cancel each other out. So now we have the limit as x approaches zero of two x squared over x squared. Well, looky here, these x squareds will cancel each other out. So that's just gonna be the limit as x approaches zero of two, which is a constant. So that's just going to be two. So that should be the answer. The answer is C. For number four, we are given this graph and we are asked which of these statements is true. Let's just take them one by one until we find the one that's true. So the limit of f as x approaches a equals the limit as x approaches b. So what is the limit as x approaches a? Um, we see that we are, are approaching the same value from the left and from the right. So that's good. So that means that this limit exists. And the limit is going to be uh, the y value. So we know that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to 2. Now what about the limit as x approaches b? Well here's b over here, uh, but we see that as we approach b from the left and as we approach b from the right, we are approaching two different y values. So that means the limit as x approaches b does not exist. The limit as x approaches b of f of x does not exist. So uh, if one limit is equal to two and the other one does not exist at all, they certainly can't be equal. So the answer is not a, so we've eliminated that. So what about b? The limit as x approaches a is two. Yep, we already determined that. So that means that the answer is B. For problem number five, we need to find the limit of X over natural log X as X approaches one. So this is really a thought question. And uh, let's do a little side lesson. When you're finding limits, the first step is to always try direct substitution. 
So it's really important that you know how to interpret the results of your direct substitution. So let's go through some examples real quick. If direct substitution gives you 2 over 6, then that's your limit. It's 2 over 6. Uh, of course, you could reduce this down to 1 third if you wanted to. If you get 0 over 6, for example, that limit is just going to be 0. If I get 6 over 2, again, that's just your limit. We could put 3. Um, if you get 6 over 0, really any number over 0, that limit simply does not exist. That would be the answer. What about when infinity is involved? If you have a number divided by infinity, in other words, if you have a, a constant in the numerator, but the denominator is just growing bigger and bigger and bigger, then the overall value is approaching zero, right? Six over 10, six over a thousand, six over a million, we're getting smaller and smaller, we're approaching zero. It's the same situation if you had zero over infinity. You still have a constant divided by something that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so that's going to be also zero. Um, if you have a constant in the denominator and the numerator is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, then the overall value just keeps growing. So this limit does not exist. All right, some people write that the limit is infinity, but an infinite limit does not exist. Uh, and in the same way, if you have a uh, zero in the denominator, but the numerator keeps growing bigger and bigger, then it's unbounded. That limit does not exist. And then of course we have our uh, indeterminate forms. In all of these cases, we just keep going. These are not answers in and of themselves. Okay, if you get zero over zero, infinity over infinity, infinity minus infinity, you have to use other techniques and keep going. So let's see how this applies to problem number five. So let's do our direct substitution. Let's let x equal one and see what we get. So this limit should equal one over the natural log of one. And hopefully you know that the natural log of one is zero. And like we just discussed, um, if you just get a number over zero, that means that this limit does not exist. So that is going to be the answer. So the answer is E. But before we move on, just in case you did not know that the natural log of one was zero, let's do a quick side lesson. You know that, uh, for example, if you have the log base 3 of 9. This is really the exponent that turns 3 into 9. Because 3 to the second power is 9, the value of this logarithm is 2. So hold that in your mind for a second. Then uh, if I have the natural log of 1, first of all, this is the same thing as log base e of 1. So you should be thinking in your mind, e to what power is equal to 1. And we know that anything to the 0 power is going to give you 1. So that's why this has a value of 0. For problem number 6, we are asked to find the limit of this piecewise function as x approaches 2. In order for this limit to exist at all, the limit as x approaches 2 from the left must equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So let's find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, and let's find the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, and see if they're equal. If they are, then that will be the overall limit. Let's start with the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. From the left of 2, the function is defined by this expression, natural log x. We can find the limit by direct substitution. Let's let x equal 2. So that gives us the natural log of 2. Um, now let's talk about the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. 
from the right of 2, uh, the function will be defined by this expression. Again, let's do direct substitution. Let's let x equal 2. So that will give us 2 squared natural log of 2, which of course is just 4 natural log 2. Obviously, natural log 2 does not equal 4 times the natural log of 2. Since the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right, the overall limit does not exist. So the answer is E. One more. For number 7, we need to find the limit of this function as x approaches a. I'm going to factor the denominator to see if anything will cancel. The denominator is the difference of two squares, so this will factor as x squared plus a squared times x squared minus a squared. Notice that we have the same factor in the numerator and the denominator. We can cancel those out without changing the limit. So that will leave us with the limit as x approaches a of 1 over x squared plus a squared. So we can now do direct substitution. Let's let x equal a and see what we get. So the limit should equal 1 over a squared plus a squared. So that's the same as 1 over 2 a squared. So that should be the limit. So the answer is B.